how much opportunity we can give to software engineers for them to monetize their technology. So let's get started. Uh, I'm excited uh, uh, to have everyone here. Welcome again. So Genesis AI is all about allowing people to use power of artificial intelligence. So the reason why we started Genesis AI was after realizing that big companies, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and so and few others are controlling almost maybe 99% of AI technologies. So they are controlling means of automation and whoever is in control of means of automation usually has enormous amount of power around resources, right? So, and we want to break the system down. We want to create AI for the people and by the people, platform and technologies that's going to allow everyone to use power of this beautiful technology, which according to many world leaders, probably going to be one of the single most transformational technology that the mankind has ever seen. And I'm extremely Extremely excited to be with one of the greatest uh, engineers and teams uh, in this specific area, working towards building uh, AI companies that is all about AI for the people and by the people. So to talk in a little bit more details, how we got started. So uh, when we are working on our previous AI company, we discovered what is probably one of the single biggest problem in artificial intelligence space, because there's so many AI tools out there on a GitHub, in the internet, inside the small companies, and they are operating in a closed environment. There's no easy connectivity among these AI tools. And at the same time, there are thousands of AI APIs, but each of them have their own networking protocol, structure, data format. It's really hard to connect to them. It's also even harder for them to communicate with each other. And this problem is probably the biggest reason why AI innovation is not reaching its full potential when it comes to how fast we are moving forward. And our goal is to accelerate AI innovation, which indirectly means acceleration, amount of contributions that AI is going to make to US and to the world as a whole. We decide to solve this problem by building a website, web platform that is a couple of words somewhere is a marketplace for AI products and services. It's a collection of AI APIs that are intertwined with each other. And for some people who might not be uh, fully up to speed. So APIs are all about, it's a software intermediary that allows different software parties to communicate with, with each other. You can think about this as a messenger, right? A communication messenger. So our platform crowdsources multiple AI tools. Now we have around 40 AI tools on our platform and we'll be making big announcements about that. In a couple of minutes, we have these tools crowdsourced, meaning some of them have been developed and deployed by our existing team members. Some of them we got from the internet, right? For example, AI tools that are out there in the internet, scattered, really hard to access, seems like forgotten, you know, but we do not forget about these AI tools that are really, really transformational for many industries. And the last part is our AI partners companies we have teamed up, uh, people who believe that they can monetize their technology through our platform. We really want to make this technology accessible, not only for buyers of AI tools, these are companies in need of AI products and services, which probably are 
personal businesses who are in need of some type of AI products and services. But also we are giving a chance to AI components and individuals to be able to monetize their AI technology without much hustle. Imagine how difficult it's going to be for, uh, let's say, smart students in uh, Ukraine who has developed absolutely great AI tool to monetize their technology. It will be almost, I would, I would never say never, but it's almost impossible, I would say. Uh, so what we are doing is allowing people to easily deploy their tool on our platform and our software engineer arts team going to show show everyone how the power and easiness and how uh, much this can do. Uh, so the, in a nutshell, we have suppliers, AI companies, and we have buyers, people in need of AI products and services. So I'll do a quick uh, product walkthrough, just a glimpse so that uh, everyone can check out what we are up to. And after that, uh, uh, some of our team members will be able to show you uh, details of our platform. So this is Genesis AI platform. This is what we have been building for almost for around three years right now. And we have made incredible progress, especially in the last 12 months, uh, time since uh, uh, our core engineering team members uh, joined from Google, Amazon, Salesforce, and so on. I would say some of the most incredible people I have ever worked with. So Genesis AI platform, you can see for some of the most popular APIs here, some of the APIs that uh, can be used in uh, daily lives, right? Uh, most of these APIs are specifically targeted to software engineers, but of course it can be used by anyone directly inside the browser. For example, we can, I'll show you guys just one tool that this one is my favorite tool and uh, Griffin gonna show some other tools. So uh, text to art, this really shows power of artificial intelligence. Here, idea is really simple. We Let's say we want to generate art from the text. How can that be done? How AI can do that? Right, so, so one of our tools, text to art, you can literally type uh, pretty much any anything you want that makes sense. Uh, and AI is really good at understanding what makes sense and what does not. Uh, you can type, for example, uh, painting of a robot's battle in the sky. Something really sort of abstract, uh, really interesting. And then in real time, you can see how AI model is starting to generate an art piece, right? Well, this is a great way to visualize power of AI. And it even shows you some of the steps it is taking, but this can have great many use cases in many areas, for example, automated way of generating pictures uh, for each user, right? So instead of there being a, a blank image of a user who, who have not uploaded his own picture, you can have an avatar or just in any type of very interesting art generated for this user. It's just a one really small use case, right? So, and I will get, show you guys some other tools that has more to do with uh, use case specifically to the businesses, right? So this is an image which I I I, am, I will be okay to hang this image behind uh, one of the images uh, uh, behind my back. Uh, this is uh, you can see the details here. Robots they are interacting. Uh, sort of there is some sort of tension there, and this is beautiful too. So it's just a, it's all done by AI, right? So this is a power. This is this really shows where AI industry is right now. And I'm um, really excited and maybe a little bit scared too about where it's going to be next 10, 20, 30 years. Maybe not so scared about 10 years, but maybe a little bit more scared about 20 years. So let's talk about, uh, and uh, on a high level, uh, Genesis AI platform is all about allowing people to discover 
test and integrate various AI related APIs. So discovery idea here is, let's say I'm looking for a text summarizer. So here I can type, for example, summarizer, and then I can find some of the existing text summarizers, right? So that's a discovery phase. Then we have a testing phase, right? For example, we can have, we can type a text here, click submit, and there will be a summary done, right? So this requires zero coding, or I can, for example, provide URL here, and the article will be summarized. This will require, this will require zero coding. Anyone can interact and uh, use, basically understand how well this is working straight from their browser. Second part is, uh, documentation. So you can read all the documentation you need as a software engineer to start thinking about which tool might be easy to integrate, how each of these tools works, and so on. You can also check out the pricing section. And the last part is install and run, right? So install and run, this section is specifically for our software engineering, existing and prospective users. This is a really super simple way to allow engineers to make real-time requests of this tool and uh, potentially make hundreds of requests each hour. Uh, for example, you want hundreds of different texts to be summarized. Let's say you are a stock researcher, right? And uh, there are uh, some big news on Tesla and uh, there's no time to read all of those, right? So you wanna get a one sentence understanding of summary of each of those articles. You can potentially do that through one of our tools called Article Summarizer, which has been deployed by one of our partner AI components. So this is really super simple way to integrate AI tool in your own environment. So if you, and if you compare and to talk about value of general Genesis AI, right? So if you compare how much time it's going to take you as an engineer to search in the internet, for example, text summarizer tool, then do more research, read all the documentations that spread out how they are working, then being able to test each of them without writing a code, which in most cases is almost impossible. And finally, learn per each tool how to integrate this. This might easily take five, 10 hours. And with Genesis AI, we really wanna bring it down to under 10 minutes, literally. So we are not potentially talking about, uh, you know, increasing uh, easiness of uh, how a person can deploy their AI tool by 10% or 20%. No, that's not, we are Genesis AI is not focused on making 10 or 20% improvements. We have not really gathered uh, one of the greatest engineers I have worked with uh, to make 10, 20, to improve, let's say, the world by 10 or 20% or AI by 10 or 20%. We want to do something transformational, something that potentially might disrupt and transform AI industry, right? That's our dream. That's our mission. That's why we are working on this. And that's why also we need your support and why we need more and more people to be involved in this. So, okay, I will not talk more about this tool as uh, Griffin and Arch, I'm going to show you guys. Uh, so I'll go back to the presentation. And uh, so let's talk about uh, one of the interesting features we have, which is uh, called uh, allowing different AI tools to work together. So idea here is, uh, but I want to bring, uh, because we have lots of uh, people who are not engineers, I want to bring human brain as an analogy. So I have different parts of human brain responsible for different things, right? For example, I can flesh my muscle. I can, I have a sensor that is 
driven by one part of the brain, blah, 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 right? So, so, and all of these different parts of the brain are interconnected with each other. And uh, this gives us an opportunity to do some of the most incredible things, some of the bad things too, of course, but mostly incredible things uh, to humanity, to the world and so on. In technology space, we are probably... Uh, one percent uh, done when it comes to building something that works in a similar way as human brain and we want to get to potentially five percent ten percent in the next couple of years through genesis ai and here is a really simple example of interaction right i can have speech recognition model for example working with translation model to produce speech translation right and you can imagine hundred more potential technologies interplay interconnected here tools that are learning from each other exchanging data and trading services this can really be powerful and everyone can go and check out this technology on our platform where you'll be able to interact for now at most three different tools at the same time but you can select i think from up to around eight tools there so our competitive advantages in markets are mostly around two prices right so first is we're trying to maximize quality of these ai tools by interconnectivity of these different ai apis and second part is lower prices right this is uh, typical economics if you increase supply of something that has negative impact on the price right so we are we now we have around 40 ai tools uh, in next couple of years our ambition is to potentially get to thousands of them let's see whether we're gonna get there but uh, potentially get to thousands of them. And I think that increased supply going to have substantially substantial reduction on the prices, which is going to be great for the community and for the people. Talk about our team. So we have myself and Mina, we are co-founders of uh, the original, let's say original co-founders of uh, Genesis AI. We went uh, to school together. We worked uh, on our previous startup, the AI startup together. Uh, we have known each other for, I think we met in 2015. Uh, so it's around seven years, a uh, long time. And uh, uh, we got joined, Mina did uh, PhD at Harvard. I did uh, uh, bachelor's in Harvard. I also worked at the uh, largest hedge fund in the world, Bridgewater Associates, and been doing startups since I was basically 17, 18 years old. Uh, we got one of the best engineers who joined us, Artyom Bell and Griffin and Levon and Mohammed. It's uh, so our core team. Artyom Bell was a software engineer at Salesforce for five years and also software engineer at American Express for five years. Griffin was software engineer at Amazon Robotics for around two years, Amazon Robotics is part of Amazon. They are specifically working on the robotics part. And he also worked at Wayfair, the software engineer. He also has masters in his focus on computer vision, which is a big part of AI. And Levon, he was at Google as a software engineer for seven years. And also, uh, uh, his experience ranges from working on the backend projects to uh, having, starting one of the best schools in the world, ETH Zurich, and so on. And we also recently got joined by Mohammed, who is leading our front end development. We also have a great team of advisors. Uh, we have professors, executives, uh, for example, Neil had a couple of billion dollar exits, uh, advisors. Uh, who are exceptional in, I would say, in their own fields. So some of the big announcements uh, for this year, and uh, this, looks, this has taken us a couple of years to develop, and I'm so excited to tell you guys uh, some of the big achievements we have. First of all, generating revenue, right? I'm really glad and happy to announce that we started to generate revenue this year, and we are going to... Uh, 
provide official numbers sometimes in next few months. Uh, second bar is now we have around 1,600 registered users on our platform. Every user is very valuable for us because each of them potentially can provide lots of lifetime value. Third part is today, as of today, May 19th, we will be launching Genesis AI platform on Product Hunt. If you guys are not familiar, Product Hunt is a place where lots of famous Companies launched their tools. Here you can see this is our page. If you go here on producthunt.com, post Genesis AI, and click on up for that will be incredible. So that we get on the on the first five companies on their own page, get a lot more users, clicks, and interactions, and potentially revenue as uh, as well through this way. And uh, Another big and uh, Artyom and Griffin are going to talk about this uh, in details about specifically about the product. I already mentioned we hired, uh, in my opinion, some of the best engineers from Google, Amazon and Salesforce. We also have been working super hard on organizing a premier AI conference, which is happening next week, next Tuesday. And uh, we are bringing incredible speakers from uh, IBM, from any road. Uh, we are bringing speakers who have uh, lead, well, I would say are leading voices in AI. For example, IHAN is global strategy, operations leader at AI research at IBM. We are also bringing VCs, investors. We are bringing uh, lots of AI components. Uh, so this is going to be incredible for us uh, when it comes to meeting some of the leading voices in AI and potentially closing deals there. And I know some of our Genesis AI community members are registered uh, or to, to come at the conference, and I'm really looking forward to see more people coming. Uh, we might turn this conference into uh, maybe be annual or an annual event, which go not only going to be a celebration of AI, but also going to be a great way for our community members to meet with each other, build meaningful relationships, and of course, great way for us to close some deals. And the last part, uh, to summarize, we have raised around 5 million since inception from over 4,000 investors. And I'm sure lots of our investors are listening to us right now. We also an open and re round recently. We already raised around 130,000. In this round from over 100 new and existing investors. And I'd like to welcome and thank you everyone for joining us again. So now I will go and... Uh, now, Griffin going to present our uh, platform, specifically some of the AI tools. Uh, just give me one second and uh, Griffin will be able to get started. Soon. Griffin, awesome. can you hear me? Yes. Great. I'll share my screen. All right. Can you guys see this? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So I'm Griffin. I'm a machine learning engineer at Genesis AI. Um, as Archul mentioned, I have a master's uh, in computer science focusing on computer vision. Um, yeah. I've, I've been really excited to work at Genesis AI. So um, for my talk here, I'm going to take you guys through two different models that I've recently deployed uh, to the website. Um, again, so we have some AIs that we've deployed here ourselves. And then also our team is going to be telling you uh, later about how people can add their own AIs to the website and, and produce profits off of that. So the first AI tool is deep fake detection. Uh, and so for those of you who don't know what uh, deep, a deep fake is, it is a video of someone doing something that they never actually did. And this is kind of uh, like, it's usually uh, in a malicious sense. Uh, and, and the technology here has been rapidly improving for creating these deep fakes. And so it's really important that we uh, develop software that is able to uh, discover and detect these deep fakes. Um, 
especially uh, social media platforms. So social media platforms, I, th I think, have a very large responsibility to kind of warn their users if, if the content that they're viewing is authentic or if it's been faked. Um, and so potentially there's going to be a lot of demand in the future for automated services that um, can detect deepfakes. So let's get started here. Uh, what we can do is you can just go here and choose a video file to, to upload and we can get that running. Um, as you can see in this video, um, that's a that's not a deep fake person, but this right here, uh, there's a deep fake face in this. And so the model um, should come back and, and tell us whether um, it thinks there's a deep fake here. So uh, this uh, the technology behind this model is, is really interesting. It uses a uh, state of their technology called a vision transformer. Um, and this is uh, incredibly recent. Um, and as you can see, it, it defect detected a deep fake with, with high confidence. Um, uh, you can also run it on normal videos too, and it'll, it'll tell you that there's no deep fake detected as expected. Um, so this AI is able to run in significantly faster than real time, about uh, 10x faster than real time for long videos. However, on short videos, there's some, there's some overhead associated with the model making it um, about real time. Uh, this is okay because generally for the use case that we're intending for the deep fake detection model, you're going to be uh, using it in asynchronous fashion, meaning you're not going to need um, real-time results. The second uh, AI model that I want to talk about is the this YouTube comment generation model. So imagine you're a content creator and you want to increase uh, engagement on your on on your YouTube video. Uh, one way to do that would be to use this tool to, to generate a bunch of comments and see what type of comments are likely to perform well on your video or on other people's related videos. So I'm going to test out this model on this cooking video from Gordon Ramsay. So you just copy and paste the URL um, into here and click submit. Um, this model is actually incredibly performance intensive. Uh, what it's doing is it's, it's going to the video, it's reading a couple thousand comments, and it's actually fine tuning a version of GPT-2 um, in for each video that it, it uses. Uh, and it's fine tuning the model to uh, look at the, the most popular uh, comments and generate comments that are similar to those ones. So it's really using kind of uh, interesting state-of-the-art technology here. And um, this model, because of that fine tuning process, it takes a couple of minutes. So I just, I'm gonna skip ahead to the, the output of the model right here. Um, and as you can see, these are the, the type of comments that it generates in, in kind of perfect English. Um, so this one is, it's like torture watching these videos of Chef Ramsay when you're starving. Um, so as you can see like that, that perfectly makes sense as, as to what it's saying. And apparently the AI thinks that this is the type of comment that um, will do well kind of in the popular eye. Um, so all in all, I think this, this technology is incredibly exciting to have all these AIs in a single place um, for software engineers uh, and, and regular users to choose from is, is going to be really important for AIs adoption in the future. Um, yeah, as you can see, we have a bunch of different models uh, that, that we didn't have time to get to in this presentation. Um, some of them are really fun kind of visual models um, for just everyday users, and then a bunch of them are uh, for enterprise purposes. Um, as well. So make sure to go check out, um, check out all of them. Uh, yeah, that's it for me. Thank you, Griffin. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Griffin has really done incredible job at deploying and enhancing some of the models uh, that uh, he showed you guys. Uh, so uh, thank you, Griffin, again. Uh, so I will uh, let Artyom present right now. Uh, just one second. Artyom, I think you are ready to present now. Thanks, Archo, and thanks, uh, Griffin. This awesome models. All right. Um, so Archil has mentioned uh, about becoming a provider and uh, becoming a uh, model provider for uh, the consumers. So I'm gonna quickly walk through um, how, to, how do you become a provider and how do you monetize your models? It's always important um, unless you're doing an open source uh, to be able to um, have some kind of 
financial output out of your models, unless of course uh, you're doing it as open source, in which case um, there's other implications to that. So first to become a provider, um, you would need to create uh, a, a, we work with the partner with Stripe. You would need to create a Stripe account and that would be the direct way for you to get paid. Um, and you do that through our settings. You basically create um, your profile, you register with us, and then you navigate over to the settings. And then you, you, this will have a setup Stripe account. It'll forward you to a Stripe address wherein you can register your information stored securely. We don't have access to your financials, Stripe does. And um, we just integrate with them in order for you to uh, get paid for hosting models with us. So next, um, you would be able to create one of the models similar to how we have them here. I'm gonna walk through creating a model called uh, face restoration. As you can see, I already did like one demo before, but I'll do one uh, here as well. So to do that, you navigate to my APIs and you will click on the add new API button. Notice here you have um, a selection here. It's called some subdomain. This is actually editable and this can be edited inside your settings profile and you can select it to be anything you want. There's a couple of reserved ones uh, that are Genesis AI specific, which you would not be able to reserve. And also you would not be able to reserve any kind of subdomain that um, is hosted by somebody else. So um, in this case, I will type in RDM, I'll hit save, and this will be unique to me. And this actually factors in later in the development process. Let me go back to my APIs. I'm gonna go add a new API. And I'm gonna say um, face restoration demo two, like so. As you can see, the API uh, URL that you'll get from us will be something similar to this. So you'll have our URL here, you'll have a proxy, then you have your specific domain name, and then you'll have the name of the demo. You can edit this, once you create this, you won't be able to edit it, but um, you can pretty much name it anything you want. Um, I'm gonna give it a name. Like so, and then I'm gonna give it just a short description like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just uh, classify this as visual recognition. I'm going to hit add API. So that's the first step of the process. Um, you have created the API uh, outlook outline, but it's not done yet. There's a couple more steps that you need to do in order to be able to publish this API. I'll walk through those right now. So first you will navigate to base URL. And this is the URL of the container or um, uh, sort of publicly accessible way for you to be able to call your model. This is assumes that you're uh, hosting it somewhere and you basically want to be able to forward any kind of request to this URL. In this case, I'm just gonna put in some sample stuff here um, like this, like so. And then if you uh, have some kind of authentication mechanism, you actually should, um, you can add that here by adding custom headers or custom parameters. And then that will basically be included within the request that we uh, use in order to call your API um, on behalf of whoever the consumer is on our site. Let's go ahead, um, hit save. I'm gonna add some endpoints. So um, assuming that um, you uh, are, and what we're building here to be more specific is we're building the path to your model. So um, just like um, Griffin mentioned uh, it, for the YouTube comments generator uh, and, and all, in fact, all of ours, they all uh, reside in a specific URL and they're called in a specific fashion. And what we've created here is a really customizable way for you to integrate with us. Um, more specifically, we support all the verbs and we support multiple formats and multiple endpoints. So let's assume that your model has, let's say something to the point of like restore face uh, endpoint. Um, you can give it a name, 
you would need to give it a description. And let's say this is a post um, like so. Hit save. And then what, you, it, what, what happens here is you just created this endpoint. Now you are ready to publish. Let's go ahead and publish. Uh, one second, apologize. Yes. Yeah, no. uh, yeah. Hit save. Publish. Yes. So now that I've published um, the model, as you can see here, it's available. Um, there's a couple of things missing that you might want to fill out. Um, and you actually are required to fill out the pricing information because that's the primary way that the users are able to subscribe you to your API. The, mo the, the way that we uh, track things in general is that um, a consumer will go to your model, they would subscribe to a monthly plan, um, either being open source or uh, paid, and uh, they can use your model after they had subscribed. So let's do that right now. I'm going to go to my APIs. I'm going to select my model. I'm going to click on definition. And I'm going to go to billing. So here you get the ability to create monthly plans. I'm just going to create, let's say we have a pro version with a, a price of $2 and a quota limit of 1,000, meaning the user can call your model within a month 1,000 times for a price of $2. Obviously you can actually create more plans. You can create like a mega plan, which we have on our site and we can have a uh, super plan, which we also um, have on our site. Let's go ahead and hit save and then hit save plan. And now you've created this, this plan here. Um, so with this, any user that goes to your uh, page um, will have this pricing information and they would be able to subscribe to it with their credit card information like so. And after that, they can go ahead and head over to um, your API keys and use this key when calling the model. Finally, there's some other things that you might wanna do. And this is more just to be user-friendly uh, maybe provide an about page and the install and run. I'm gonna go ahead and create an install and run for you just to show you um, how we try to help the user in invoking your model. So let's do that. Head over to my APIs again, go to definition and then go to documentation. So in here, you can see that you've published one version. In fact, any published and unpublished versions will appear here. And we currently support HTTP and Python examples. So I'm gonna go ahead and select Python. I'm just gonna type in some information here um, for us. So let's say I have some sample input, which would be a base 64 encoded image uh, for this specific model. I can provide some sample output like so. And then uh, I'm going to paste some Python code that is basically like a post request to, um, to this. So very simple marketplace uh, backend, you would have like some kind of URL here um, that you might wanna do, or you can just say, uh, you know, base URL, since this is just uh, just an example. And after that, hit save. Um, and that's it. Now, when the user navigates to your, uh, to your model, goes to the Python examples, they're given a, an entire URL that they're able to call with the correct versioning information for you and the samples that you have provided for them, which makes it really easy with a tool like, let's say Postman or from whatever their custom tools are to be able to use this model in their own environment and um, get started right away. And so with that, I, I conclude, and there's other features exciting that we're working on. And I'm sure that um, Archul will um, ev eventually um, get to that. Thank you. Thank you, Artyom. Absolutely. Uh, very important uh, what uh, you just showed us right now. 
And uh, this brings me to one of the questions that was asked. And also, I'd like to open uh, now for any questions. Uh, feel free to use uh, question and answer tab on uh, bottom right. You can type there any questions you have. And uh, then uh, either myself or some of our other team members going to answer those questions. And I want to make sure that I will be able to answer all the questions. Uh, so one of the first questions that came in is about scaling, right? Uh, uh, question is about how do you scale? How do we go from where we are now to potentially 10 or 100 X? And for scaling, I guess uh, there are two things we really need to scale. So the first part is scaling supplier side. On well, the supplier side, there are usually two approaches, right? So first one is uh, allowing, uh, basically incentivizing different AI suppliers to uh, market their products, uh, bring lots of their users on our platform, right? So for example, Amazon, uh, let's say you have an online store on Amazon and you are you're selling bicycles. Uh, it's under your best interest to do great marketing, any type of marketing you want to find users and people who is going to buy your bicycles on Amazon, right? So people spend actually one of the big chunk of revenue for Amazon is exactly people paying for Amazon ads, right? People paying to be featured in the Amazon. It's let's say top part of the search results. So one way will be that suppliers we already have and much more that we potentially gonna get going to bring lots of their users and it's going to be I wouldn't say now free money for us but getting uh pretty i would say to be a pretty good deal for genesis when it comes to uh, getting uh, people do marketing uh, and second part will be we will be doing genesis real team will be doing uh, a marketing to acquire more users more suppliers uh, uh, and at the same time we really will be focusing on organic growth right uh, we believe especially in this macro environment uh, where every penny spent is important uh, and getting to break even point as soon as possible is extremely important uh, uh, we will be very much focused on the organic growth as well and i'll talk i'll take uh, a second question uh, right now which is uh, about uh, uh machine learning protocol, right? Uh, as is connectivity specifically. So right now we have uh, tools that are connected with each other. And I mentioned specific uh, example of how speech recognition translation can be connected, right? Uh, we have up to around eight tools that can be connected at most three different tools. And I think our goal will potentially be to uh, I'd probably scale the top by 10 times or even 100 times. Uh, and we believe that uh, that's potentially closest we can get to human brain in terms of like how human brain works or conceptually getting there and hopefully practically as well. Okay, there are lots more, lots of questions that came in. So uh, I'll just be able to take a couple of these. Uh, so um, there is a question about uh, exit strategy, right? So I guess this is probably one of our investors is say either existing or prospective investors asking about this. So for exit strategy, first of all, I mean, we have been advised by legal counsel to, of course, uh, we cannot make any not definitive statements here, nor really create any expectations uh, about uh, exiting, but there can be two general exits, right? So first one is acquisition and second one is, uh, is IPO. There has been a great number of acquisitions in our industry, or just an industry. For example, one of our competitors, Algorithmia, got uh, bought out, uh, I think six months ago, maybe their price is not disclosed, but based on what I'm hearing, they were able to sell it for uh, 250 million. And uh, 
I think that was one of the biggest uh, uh, exits uh, in uh, in our specific niche industry, which is AI. AI marketplaces, uh, right? Uh, our my personal uh, dream and goal, I guess, is to definitely uh, focus more on potentially uh, IPO instead of acquisition, uh, because we are dreaming big. We are dreaming uh, uh, to allow everyone to use the power of AI, and we don't want uh, anyone uh, to uh, let's say uh, interfere in this vision of realizing dream of uh, AI for all. But I again, this is not, uh, of course, uh, guaranteed or anything. Uh, so uh, when it comes to uh, uh, some other questions here. Let me see. Uh, there's a question about the blockchain as well. And uh, I guess uh, we were getting a lot more questions about blockchain a couple of months ago when uh, uh, Bitcoin price was about 50K, now a little bit less, but with blockchain. So we have great experience with blockchain. Actually, we, our initial goal was to build blockchain-based AI marketplace. And we soon realized that uh, technology was very hard to do anything on top of it, even though our engineers had great experience uh, with building some of the most complicated solutions, uh, I would say, uh, that I have heard of. Uh, it was really hard. Doing something on top of blockchain was taking a lot longer than than uh, outside of blockchain. And the use case was not truly truly there. We even had uh, some of the uh, uh, MOUs signed with few stable coins. Uh, uh, I don't remember exact names, but I think it was one of them was actually one of the biggest ones, which was uh, uh, USDT. And um, but we are now we do not have a short term plans with blockchain. Maybe in the in the future, because blockchain technology is uh, developing uh, pretty fast, it's became a lot more scalable and so on. So maybe the future. And of course, I mean this question is at some degree uh, more uh, directed towards me now, Artyom and Chris Finnes. They are uh, part. They are leading our engineering direction. So I definitely do not uh, make decisions, engineering decisions uh, on behalf of uh, my engineers. So, okay, sounds good. So uh, uh, some of the other questions, there is uh, one more question about uh, how do you vet the AI models, right? So, so maybe Griffin, uh, it would be great if you take uh, this question. The question is how do you vet AI models? Sure. So um, right now you can, you can, anyone can sign up and add a, an AI endpoint to the site. Um, uh, we do have the ability to um, kind of accept or deny this model. However, we, we haven't chosen to do that yet. So we haven't had any like kind of abuse of the system and we don't imagine that there's going to be a lot of this. Um, in terms of moderation, uh, I think the best way um, the, the best way to do this is to let our users decide which AIs are the best, kind of a similar way how like anybody can put a, put a product or service on, on Amazon and it's the users who review it and, and rate it. And that actually tells others um, what the best products and services are. So that's kind of what we want to encourage. You want to have that kind of like market dynamic where the best um, AIs are, are we, we, we bring in a lot of different AIs and then our users go in and figure out which ones are the best. Um, however, Obviously, if there's any sort of kind of uh, like abusive content or um, uh, something that's that's undesirable for the site, we, we completely have the ability uh, to deny that and take that off. Uh, but uh, as I've said, we, we haven't had, had any issues with that so far. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Griffin. Uh, and uh, also, there's a question about uh, demo of the combining multiple AI. So I highly recommend... Uh, to go to actually, I think this is great. Uh, also, also, excuse to sign up on our platform. So, go to our platform and uh, click on cross provider, and then you will be able to have interplay of different AI tools uh, working together to obtain very powerful uh, results. Uh, is there another question that has to do with? Uh, how do you, some of the, I guess, changes we are planning to make with the how suppliers deploy their 
um, their tools and uh, scalability, right? Uh, uh, how my, how scalable the suppliers deploying their tools might be. So, Arjo, maybe you can take this question. Absolutely. So, uh, basically, we have, so to speak, uh, close to unlimited scale to do it because of the framework that we're using. Um, essentially, we um, have two separate um, architecture paths. One is to um, be a uh, hosting the actual model. And the next thing is hosting what we um, essentially call the marketplace. The marketplace is where the UI that you, you saw in the demo. And this is what generates all the APIs um, for that user and the ones that register the models. The models themselves can be scaled independently of the site. It can be scaled independently of any kind of authentication mechanisms and all of that is separated out. It's its own processes. So um, essentially it's really a limiting factor of how big um, the demand is for that model and what is um, uh, the, the creator of the model wants to do with it. So essentially like you as the creator of that model, as the provider can sort of drive um, these kind of metrics. Obviously, the more uh, the users that subscribe to your model, um, the more scale it would need to cover. And that really becomes a sort of like, uh, uh, um, how to speak? It, it would become so, sort of like um, um, on you to decide how do you charge for that? So if it's a pricing for a monthly subscription, uh, does your monthly subscription price that you have in your mind cover the expenses of the model? Does it not? Kind of up to you to decide, but we're always available for consultation um, it, when it comes to that as well. Uh, I, th I know that Griffin uh, did a lot of work with the, the model hosting um, uh, and providing the models themselves. And um, he is, so to speak, an expert on that. Um, from the back end side, I can say that um, we would not experience any kind of um, scaling issues as well, mainly because that layer that uh, we created that does the authentication and that does the UI and that does the design is a very thin layer and it's also extremely scalable. Thank you. Thank you, Artem. Uh, and there are a lot more questions, but I think there is. Uh one more that uh, we will be able to answer today and Griffin also answered a couple of them in the chat uh, and uh, we'll have to uh, continue this conversation. We're probably going to do this more often in terms of in making, uh, basically having a big event to make big announcements, right? Uh, most of the progress that, most of the announcements I have made actually have been uh, generating last couple of months. So I'm sure we're probably going to have a couple of really good announcements lined up soon. So to take the last question and then I'll go to the summary of today and I guess um, uh, some of the next steps. So one question, and I think this is probably one of my favorite questions, is about uh, the stream of AGI, artificial general intelligence, right? Uh, and I would say, because why, right? Because artificial general intelligence uh, can be, is a sort of a pinnacle of technology, sort of an end game. It's uh, at some degree what we're whole mankind uh, should be striving towards, right? Because, because this can be sort of one solution. It sounds too good to be true, but uh, one solution that can literally solve maybe 99% of things, right? Uh, this is one of the rare cases when something that sounds too good to be true is actually true, right? Uh, but really hard to uh, get there. So what's our vision? Uh, towards AGI, of course, we don't know whether we will ever going to get there, but our vision, we believe we have the most practical approaches towards striving to build a found, potentially foundation for artificial general intelligence. Our approach uh, drives, uh, borrows analogy from human brain, right? So human brain, there are different parts responsible for different things. And interconnectivity 
is what makes it beautiful and powerful. Nobody really knows how this interconnectivity actually works or interconnectivity is an essence of uh, human brain being able to do some incredible things, right? Uh, so we have a similar approach. Our goal is to have potentially thousands of experts, AI tools on our platform. For example, speech recognition, uh, visual recognition, uh, uh, translation and so on and all of them being interconnected with each other so that as a whole they are able to do really powerful things right uh, one part of the brain independently can do little but combined with others it can literally do miracles right so this is what what we want to do uh, and where what's what's our dream i guess uh, and uh, Elon Musk says that uh, AGI can become potentially reality next uh, uh, next uh, 10, 20 years. So, uh, we think that uh, uh, it's uh, maybe not out of out of uh, reality, maybe not uh, uh, not stupid, I guess to say the least. Uh, but we'll talk more about this. So to summarize, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. And this was absolutely great. Some of the big announcements, some of the announcements we have been, uh, that came to fruition in the last couple of months and uh, some of the product development that has been in place for three years, almost around three years right now. I'd like to thank all of our users, investors, uh, who have been incredibly helpful in driving Genesis AI forward. Our team members, uh, people who have done an incredible job in what I believe is to be one of the, to the best AI marketplaces that potentially would be transformational. So to South, a couple of things, if you were interested with our tool, uh, please sign up on genesisai.io. You can click on sign up at the top right corner and subscribe with some of our tools. Uh, if you are interested to reinvest or uh, become our new investor, and uh, there was a question also about international investors, and we do have lots of international investors. Uh, if you are interested to reinvest or uh, become a new investor, go to investgenesisai.io. And also, please do not forget to upvote us on Product Hunt. It's basically the same thing as liking a product. As product Hunt is where we launched uh, our platform. And uh, video recording will be sent out. And also feel free to check out our disclaimer as well. So thank you, everyone. This was absolutely great. Uh, I really loved to see around 500 people registering and more, more than 100 people showing up today. Is it stronger? More we are, stronger we are. And together we are really strong. Uh, and uh, let's, let's hope for the best. Uh, I have said many times, I think we're going to win. And uh, thank you for everyone. Have a great rest of the week.